There's a gap in the drone market. On the lower end, you've got brands like Xerox creating drones that are extremely affordable, but lack a lot of the creature comforts and features that you'd want out of a drone. Things like live camera views or gimbal stabilization. And then after that, it's straight onto the high end, the DJI Minis and the Mavics of the world. But what if you want something in between? What if you want something that's affordable, gets some nice footage, and that you don't even really need to know how to fly? That is where the DJI Neo comes in. It's affordable, it flies itself, and you get some great quality, stable, high resolution footage, up to 4K. I'd show you the drone in this shot, but it's been filming this entire intro completely autonomously. My name is Harry, you're watching Probably Hades, and this is my review of the DJI Neo. To be clear, I'm aware that drones like this have existed in the past. The first one that comes to mind for me personally is when Snap tried to make the Pixie, and that looked pretty cool, but it eventually got discontinued, and if I recall correctly, it ended up being a fire hazard. There are other brands that seem to have self-flying drones in this sort of price range that seem pretty decent, but the main difference here is that DJI is clearly the undisputed king of consumer drones, especially for the more high-end products. If you search for the term drone on Amazon, you're getting all of like the Zero Xs and the toy quadcopters and things like that, and then it's just straight into DJI Minis. So DJI entering this sort of category of drones that don't need much experience to fly and that are pretty affordable, that's gonna shake things up a bit. And looking at other listings, they seem to have one of the most affordable options in that market at the moment. But with that out of the way, let's get to the unboxing. There's two SKUs of the DJI Neo, similar to a lot of other DJI drones. There's the base model, and then there's the fly more combo. I initially purchased the base model, which costs around 200 US dollars. That comes with a drone and a single battery, along with your, your usual accessories, like a C to C cable for charging and data, stickers, a couple of spare propellers, and the normal runaround of quick start guides, warranties, and safety info, which are made even more annoying because it's an aircraft. I eventually returned this skew for the fly more combo so that I could actually take control of the thing. I didn't mention a controller earlier because that version doesn't come with one. It relies entirely on the self-flying and maybe your touch controls, which I'll talk about why you don't want to deal with that later. The fly more combo comes with everything in the standard base model, plus two extra batteries, a three-way battery charger, and the RC N3 remote control. Again, the main reason I bought that kit was the controller, and it was worth every extra dollar. One thing to note is that for both of the SKUs, the batteries don't come with much charge out of the box. You're definitely gonna to need to charge them before you start flying for more than a few minutes. That'll take around half an hour of charging through the drone, just plugging a Type-C cable straight in, or 60 minutes for all three batteries using the three-way charger. After that, you'll get a full 18 minutes of flight time. No matter which SKU you pick, the initial setup for the DJI Neo is dead simple. All you'll need to do is open up the DJI Fly app and create an account, pay your drone over Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and you'll be all set to start running through the tutorial. That account setup, unlike a lot of DJI's other camera hardware, is a mandatory step because of their legal obligations to register drones and boring legal stuff like that. You'll need your phone for the initial setup, but honestly, if you're only using the self-flying, you don't really need it much afterwards. You don't even really need it to transfer files. You could just, again, connect straight over USB-C to a computer or your phone with the files app and transfer things that way. Although the app is pretty nice and I'll talk about that more in depth later. If you have the controller, you'll need to set up both the drone and the controller separately. If you only set up the controller, you'll be able to fly, but you won't get the self-flying modes or the quick transfer feature. And if you only set up the drone, you won't have the controller, obviously. But the controller is just as easy. You plug it into your phone using the USB-C cable that comes attached or with the included lightning connector that you can swap it out for and turn on the drone and the controller. The app should pick up the controller, the controller will pick up the drone, and you're good to start flying. Speaking of the controller, it is very nice. It's got a good amount of heft to it without feeling too heavy to the point where it would be uncomfortable over a long flight session. And it has a good amount of battery life that will last you through even a full flight session with all of the three batteries that come in the Fly More kit. And it can even use that battery to charge your phone while you're flying as well. And that feature can be toggled on or off within the app. The sticks on the controls are detachable, so you can throw it into a bag easier without damaging the sticks. And there's onboard storage compartments for those joysticks to make sure you don't lose them. On the face of the controller, you've got two control sticks that by default control the Y and X axis on the left and your actual movement in space on the right. But this can be configured within the DJI Fly app if you're used to something else. Those joysticks feel great. They move smoothly and still click into the positions at the edges, similar to what like a GameCube or N64 controller would do. In the corner of the sticks, you've got a configurable function button and a camera flip button. 
By default for the Neo, these buttons recent to the gimbal and change the camera mode between video and photo respectively. The switch in the center changes the flight mode between cinema, normal and sport, which change the default speed curves and maximums. On either side of that, you've got this button, which doesn't seem to do anything with the Neo, and the power button, along with the battery indicator along the bottom. On top, there's a dial for more granule control over the position of the camera gimbal, and a physical shutter button for starting and stopping video or taking photos, if you prefer that over the touch controls. On the bottom, there's the stick compartments that I mentioned earlier, and a USB-C port for charging. In my testing, that port doesn't work for data transfer, so if you are wanting to use it with a PC first-person view simulator, that's not going to work here. The controller has a range of 10 kilometers with video transmission, as long as you have a clear line of sight, which is more than I can really actually test. I live in a city, and Australian law requires me to have a clear line of sight with my eyes to the drone to fly it, so I just, I can't really do that 10 kilometers away. <laughs> The furthest I've taken it so far in terms of distance from me to the controller is around 120 meters up, which is the maximum altitude that the Fly app will let it go to, and it worked flawlessly there. If you're not a fan of that specific controller, you can also control it with the DJI FPV controllers, and there are touch controls within the app, but I would absolutely not recommend those at all. If you don't like controllers at all, the good news, you don't need one. You can have this thing just fly itself, like I mentioned earlier, and as you saw in the intro. It is a shockingly painless and easy experience to get the thing going without any sort of manual control. On the drone itself, there's two buttons. There's the power button and the mode button. After you've turned on the drone, you can use the mode button to cycle through the different presets available for flight. and actually flying it is as simple as holding it at arm's length with the camera pointing towards you and holding down the button. You'll hear a spoken confirmation of the flight mode that you're in, and then a countdown. Close. Direction track. Three, two, one. It'll take off straight from your palm, and as soon as it takes off, it'll start recording video. The follow mode is the main one that I've been testing, and it works insanely well, even indoors. I had it follow me around while I air fried some pizza for lunch, and it genuinely felt like a futuristic Head, something that I'd seen like a Fortnite back bling or like a Meet the Robinsons looking thing. <laughs> it is seriously cool and it locks onto the subject really well. It even circles around to try and find your subject if it runs out of frame too quickly. Once you're done flying, you can just hold your palm underneath the Neo and it'll stop recording and land it in your hand automatically. And you haven't even touched a controller, a phone, or anything else but the drone. It's really cool. You can use the DJI Fly app while it's using these presets to get an idea of what the camera sees and to see what it's tracking, indicated by a green box on the screen. You can even control the drone with voice controls using the Hey Fly Wake word to make it even more hands-free. Hey Fly. Here. Follow. Follow. Three, two, one. Hey Fly. Here. Land. I'd recommend having the app ready to go at a moment's notice when you start messing around with the presets at first, as it'll let you immediately cancel the preset and start landing if it starts going rogue and going somewhere that you didn't expect, like straight into a power line or something. If you don't really want to deal with a controller, maybe you don't want to spend the extra money on the Fly More kit, but you still want the manual controls, there are touch controls available within the DJI Fly app. They're terrible. <laughs> Do, don't... Do not rely on them ever. If you're like making fine adjustments to make sure a photo is perfectly framed, then like, sure, I guess it works. But anything more than that, and they are a total write-off. Which is fair, considering they're not really designed for much more, but I figured it's still worth mentioning. For starters, without a controller, the mobile app can only keep a connection up to 50 meters, which is... It's a fair bit, but it's nothing compared to the controller. And outside of the fact that you're using sticks with no haptic feedback on a slab of glass and in a forced vertical layout, they also limit you tremendously. The second the drone loses any sort of automatic positioning, whether that's through GPS or through the camera, it just leans itself where it is, giving you no opportunity to fly it back to a zone where it has those positioning features. This sort of flight is called attitude mode. As far as I can tell, it's pretty standard across other drones and it works fine with the controller as long as you're good enough of a pilot to kind of counter the moves it makes when it doesn't really know where it is. And even in those ideal conditions, the touch controls are just a pain to deal with. You might be fine if you're a veteran COD mobile player or whatever, but that's not me. I personally much rather the controller. I like my physical buttons, especially in a car, but that's a tangent for another day when I don't know, maybe Tesla like sends me a loan car. <laughs> when you're flying, no matter what control method, you want that flight to be good. And the DJI Neo 
nails that pretty well. If you're flying in the wind, it's gonna be a bit difficult to keep stable, particularly in those manual control modes, but it can handle a little bit of a gust without going too far off course. And realistically, when your drone is 135 grams, there's not really much you can do to counter that. In ideal conditions, it hovers very steadily, and it was still enough for me to use this overhead shot from the drone in my Rincon Gen 2 review. Talking about the app again, I do have some thoughts. Overall, the app is pretty decent. It's clear that it is designed for professionals in mind, especially considering it forces you into landscape before bringing it to the vertical friendly UI, if that makes sense, when the drone connects. But it does add some nice quality of life, like the voice controls I mentioned earlier, and also built-in features to see whether you can legally fly in the area you're in using your current location. However, I personally think the Neo would benefit from a dedicated app. It would stop the main fly app from becoming too large and oversimplified for the Mavic and Mini users, and I guess the Neo pilots who have the controllers, and allow for a much nicer user experience that is made with the Neo in mind. You might even be able to include some more fun features like filters and overlays for your videos if you didn't need to really worry about the professional audience. But like I said earlier, I still think the app is pretty good. It does the job it needs to do and it does it well. Transferring content is dead simple through the quick transfer feature. It connects to a Wi-Fi hotspot on the drone itself and saves them straight to your photo library. And when you're flying, it'll even pump warnings that usually go straight to the drone speakers into your phone audio. So you could have them play to Bluetooth headphones or something. Now the camera is pretty important on a lot of drones. I kind of harped on some of those cheaper drones for not having a greater camera in the intro. So how does this one look? Well, like you saw in the intro, it can look pretty damn good. In terms of on paper performance, it'll shoot up to 4K at 30 FPS or up to 1080p at 60 FPS for smoother footage. And it can do still images at up to nine megapixels. Quickly want to mention that shooting in all of the auto modes defaults to 4K at 30. None of these formats, including images, have any sort of raw formats or log color profiles though. Obviously the key audience of that drone isn't really gonna care, but if you're a you know long form creator like I am, then you might not appreciate that. When you look at it physically, there's a few downsides as well. For starters, the gimbal only stabilizes on the Y axis for up and down. So you'll have camera stabilization when you're moving forwards and backwards, but no physical correction when you're going side to side. Luckily, the digital stabilization that DJI applies is phenomenal, and those types of movements are barely noticeable. Unfortunately, the lack of more than one axis camera movement does mean no native support for vertical video. So you'll need to put some extra work into your framing if you're creating content for TikTok or Instagram Reels, for example. And it's at this point, I get to say, thank God I still make long form horizontal content because I don't need to put any effort in. The footage out of the camera can get a tad bit noisy in low light conditions, but in better conditions, it can look damn good. Obviously, it's not gonna be as great as something like a Mini or a Mavic, and you don't have features like optical or digital zoom, but it's pretty decent. In daylight, colors pop nicely, and while the dynamic range is definitely nothing to rave about, the auto exposure tends to work pretty quickly and accurately. When you're shooting in slightly worse than ideal conditions, the colors might look ever so slightly off, but it gets the job done. Similarly, stills maintain a color profile and overall look that is almost identical to the videos. Now, the Neo does not have a built in microphone. However, the Neo does actually have an option to use your phone microphone as a microphone when you're using the DJI Fly app. And this is what it sounds like. It adds some noise reduction to try and cancel the noise of the drone going. In fact, I'll start my medical. No, I won't. Never mind. I was going to say I'd start the glasses, but I can't. So this is what that sounds like. That noise reduction kind of makes it sound terrible, but considering this is what audio with the drone in the background sounds like without it. There's a gap in the drone market. On the lower end, you've it's pretty necessary. Once you've gotten the footage off of your 32 gigabytes of internal storage, which cannot be expanded or replaced, which is a bit of a bummer, the drone also automatically creates a .srt file that contains information about your GPS, the speed, latitude, longitude, altitude, things like that. Hypothetically, you could use this to add overlays in your editor to spice up your footage a bit, but I don't personally know how you'd be able to pass that data. DJI's partner video editing app for mobile devices, Lightcut, I would assume should be able to do this and does show as having support for the Neo in their documentation, but I haven't been able to get the drone to pair to the app. There's not an option for it at all and it doesn't seem to pick it up automatically. The quality is pretty great for the price and would easily work for social media content and maybe even smaller scale film projects. So this is an excellent product for creators. And even if you're just someone looking to capture more memories into your photo library, this is a great camera with the main difference between this and you know your phone is that it, it 
it flies, it's, it goes in the air. But there is a catch, and it's mainly just that it's still a drone. You might, you might think I'm sounding stupid, but just hear me out for a sec. It can be easy to forget that this is an aircraft because of its weight, its size, and its price. It is an aircraft, and it is subject to the laws that drones usually have to follow. I'm using this in Australia, for example. So if I wanted to, let's say, monetize this video, I would need to register with the Civil Aviation Safety Authority and get my drone properly registered. Granted, the size of this drone does make it exempt from a lot of regulations. For example, because it's under 250 grams, I could fly within five and a half kilometers of a controlled airport, but it's still a lot more work to consider compared to a standard camera. For example, in New South Wales, if you want to fly in a national park, for example, you're going to need at least 10 days notice along with express permission. So if you're just kind of wanting to take some photos of you and the family, it's not gonna cut it. If you're on private property, your ability to fly is entirely up to the building owners. It's also still really loud in flight like most drones are and requires a lot of room and visibility to fly properly. There's a few very specific use cases that drones are able to thrive in and the Neo lets anyone take advantage of those use cases, but it's still a drone. And that's the, that's the biggest catch here. So even with that aside, it's it's pretty obvious that I highly recommend the DJI Neo. It is a fantastic product. It's adorably tiny, it flies and tracks beautifully, and it's a great alternative to bigger and more expensive drones that might not be as easy to fly and carry. You definitely need the Neo to be in its element with a lot of room and following all of the legal requirements that you need to follow. But once you're out there, this thing rocks. And that's it. If you like this video, you can hit that button. And if you really like this video, you can hit subscribe. If you've got someone who's looking for a drone, maybe even share this video to them. You can follow me over on the meta apps, Blue Sky and everything else with the links on screen and in the description below. If you want more of my videos, you can click over here to watch my review of the Rincon Gen 2, which as of writing completely flopped, but it's still a pretty good video, so you should go watch it. Or you can click over here to check out whatever YouTube thinks you'll like. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.